Distance is an F-Zero-y, Tron-esque trip into pure chaos. The current build of the game under review, Beta 4139, though only in early access on Steam, does contain plenty of content to keep gamers busy. The beta version of Distance houses a pretty bare-bones story called Adventure. It definitely is an adventure, and there is some story to soak up here, though not a whole lot. The beginning narrative introduces us to the idea of the protagonist, which is some kind of sentient platform mobile that looks like a car. I say looks like a car because you'll find out over the course of the adventure that you have a pretty substantial range of mobility options at your disposal. As with any platformer packing some advanced mechanics, distance starts off by treating you like a toddler. You'll have an accelerate button and you'll be able to steer, but that's about it. But the savvy driver is soon abundantly rewarded with wave after wave of new obstacles and mechanics from which to bypass them. You'll learn how to boost right away in order to get over certain sized gaps that you wouldn't normally be able to traverse. You'll then find out that your sentient platform mobile can sprout some wings from either side and leisurely fly in any direction. This adds a humongous amount of range to the options you have in conquering some of the tougher challenges. Although, I was both disappointed and understanding when I found out that flight would occasionally be deactivated in order to not break certain difficulty barriers in adventure mode. Additionally, boost and flight work off of the same meter, and allowing this meter to fill causes you to hear an overheat alarm. Overheating too long causes an explosion and a reset from the previous checkpoint. Luckily, however, checkpoints are very liberally placed throughout each map in adventure mode. Without spoiling any details of the very bare-bones story, which is really more of a setting than anything else, I would like to say that there is an underlying horror vibe present in this dystopian neon wasteland, but it's cool, and it doesn't feel too heavy-handed or like any conceits were made in order for it to make it into the game. At the abrupt end of the included 10 levels or so of the Remember It's Beta story mode, you'll find that you feel prepared to march straight into some of the other gameplay modes that Distance has to offer. Just in the beta version of the game, there's a huge amount of replay value already present. Distance offers a pretty well thought out, though basically what you'd expect, multiplayer mode that allows groups of currently up to six players to go all Sonic the Hedgehog in maps, either created by the developers, created by the community using the in-game level editor, or generated by inputting seeds into the track modification tool, which randomly generates levels based on strings of letters. Each of these categories offer immense replayability and are sure to keep anyone coming back again and again since the game provides such a high level of wow, that was so cool moments. Multiplayer is purely racing. There are several modes, such as a tag mode, a challenge mode, and a sprint mode. Tag mode consists of players trying to be it as long as possible. Challenge mode consists of trying to clear tons of obstacles with no checkpoints turned on. And sprint mode is just good old classic race to the finish. Each of these modes is pretty spectacular, though the game misses out on achieving near Mario Kart levels of competitive frustration since there isn't any collision detection between the vehicles. You can see everyone else alongside you on the courses, you can even see when they splat right into a barrier that popped up out of the ground while they were confidently speeding past at 500 miles per hour, but you can't bump into them at all. It's the equivalent of playing with a bunch of ghosts. That very small complaint aside, the multiplayer is still very engaging, and the inclusion of text chat between participants allows for some really nice banter in between matches. One glaring omission, however, is that there is no option when creating a multiplayer lobby on or offline to disable the platform mobile's plane function. This created a situation for me where a room full of people called me a track skipper because I flew from one tricky portion of the map to another, the equivalent of using a mushroom in Mario Kart to speed through rough terrain for a shortcut. Sure, this is probably common sense for most people, but I used the tools at my disposal, given by the game, and then found out that this was somehow looked down upon. For good reason, too. I mean, it made sense. In some cases, because of the layout of a track, an opponent could finish a race in 30 seconds, while the rest of us trudged on for a full two minutes or more, simply because he found an opening to skip track to the exit. This, however, was a very small hassle and the community seemed to be understandingly aware that the omission of an option to turn off flight in these multiplayer lobbies 
is an oversight simply not implemented in the beta phase of Distance. Also, in relation to multiplayer, worthy of mention is that aside from the online multiplayer aspect, there is also the highly coveted among PC gamers option to play in split screen offline. After you've taken the community created tracks for a spin, you may feel compelled to try your own hand at creating an amazing course filled with danger and explosions, and thankfully, Distance includes a vast level editor, simple enough to get started in without much training, and advanced enough that you could basically create your own standalone story with the tools at your disposal. If you thought with the advent of Super Mario Maker that maybe someday, somehow, an F-Zero Maker was around the corner, I hate to burst your bubble, but Distance may be the closest you ever come to realizing that dream. Lastly, this experience is a visual delight, and both audio and video build off of one another. The buildings pulsate in vibrant color to the resounding beats of the techno soundtrack. The environment moves in a showcase of sublime aural rhythm. I did notice that the boost sound coming from the platform mobile was a little loud and kind of whiny when it hits top speed, but everything else is great. Textures are clean throughout, and obstacles on the track ahead of you are easy to see, even when they're flying at you at what seems to be an instant. There were a couple of times I felt a little bit turned around, but with clear visual cues, I found myself right back on the right track quickly. As for optimization, I tested the game on my desktop with an NVIDIA 980 Ti and an i7-2600K at 1440p resolution with the graphics cranked all the way up and I easily maintained 60 frames throughout all the time I spent playing. I also tested the game at 1080p with an NVIDIA 860M, and I had zero frame drops below 60 frames per second, even when the screen erupted in a magnificent neon explosion in front of my eyes. Distance is one of the most purely fun games I've ever played. It can be very easy, and it can be blisteringly difficult, but the undoubtedly adrenaline-filled excitement is sure to impress most. At a suggested retail price of $19.99, Distance is totally worth its cost right now, in early access. And to sweeten the deal, it routinely goes on sale on Steam. For what it's worth, I give Distance on PC an 83 out of 100.